Hello, folks. Um, my name is Diane Gayhart, and I am celebrating one year of my MFT license exam prep course called Laugh Your Way to Licensure. And it has, um, this is nothing I ever expected to do, but it has been so rewarding. And in celebration, I wanted to share um, a answer exam strategy that I think um, could work whether or not you're taking my course. And actually, it really will work with most licensing exams out there, um, certainly in the world of mental health, because they all are, they're constructed in, in a similar way, which is totally different than any course you probably ever took in college or um, graduate school or any exam you took in college or graduate school. Because when you were in a graduate program, right? Everyone read the same books. Everybody, you know, had the same lecture. And then we all had this really clearly defined body of knowledge you had to, to master, right? Even if it's comprehensive exams. Um, but when it gets to these national licensing exams or, you know, California's licensing exam, the, the, the breadth of knowledge and the spectrum of knowledge and just the number of potential sources they could have pulled to come up with these questions is just too vast. And so you need a very different strategy um, than you do when you're in graduate school or college taking an exam. And it's really over the year of, um, of uh, 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 hosting the, these courses where I have a live um, coaching session every month where we I get together the folks in my course and we just walk through questions together. What we've really come to pinpoint is that your answer exam strategy is just as important, if not more important than knowing the content. So um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna walk you through the answer exam strategy um, that I am so excited about. I actually put it into language it slowly emerged over the last year, but I finally gave it a name. It is called red light, green light, or red light, yellow light, green light, is to be very specific, um, based on the childhood game that hopefully you got to play. And it really has been so helpful in helping my reducing anxiety, thinking clearly through the different types of um, answers, because there are definitely some questions where you're going to like all your options. There are definitely some questions you're not going to like any of your options. And this exam, a red light, green light, can be so helpful in, in finding the right answer. So let's go ahead and get started, because I am going to introduce you um, to the technique, and then we are going to practice with a couple of questions. Okay. So this is my laugh your way to licensure course. And I'm just gonna uh, give you some just overviews of some of the key strategies. But before we do, I really um, just want, I mean, if you're, you're listing this, I'm guessing you're taking your licensing exam. And I think it's so important to keep in mind that there are really three keys to passing uh, your licensing exam. The first is knowing content. And most people, um, and I think most exam prep companies fo focus so much on the content, which you have to have it. You have to know structural from strategic, from CVT, from Satir, from post, you, you know, you gotta know your DSM. Yes, you gotta know all the diagnoses in that big darn book. You gotta know your law and ethics. You do need to know that and that's important, but knowing that is not sufficient. And if you've talked to any competent therapist who did not pass the first time, there's a lot of example out there of people who know the content but still cannot pass. And that is because they don't have the other two keys. And the second one is strategy. And increasingly at this point, after uh, spending a lot of time coaching folks, I, I think strategy is the number one key to master. Um, I have over 20 hours of content in my course and I keep adding to it. Red light, green light is one of the newest additions um, to the strategy that I've added. Um, because uh, knowing how to answer these questions really allows you to apply the content that you know. And you can know the content, but if you don't have the right strategy, you are not going to pass. And that is a sad but true statement. And the third is test anxiety management. And, you know, so many people, you know, because most people who take this exam, well, everyone pretty much has a master's degree or a doctorate degree. They were very good students, and most of them did not have a lot of test anxiety, you know. And so oftentimes they go into this, you know, four hour long test thinking, yeah, I don't need to worry about test anxiety because they never had. 
But there, this test is different. And I have many, many people who told me I use mindfulness. I, I do a lot of mindfulness in my clinical work. So I added it to my licensing course. And I've had many people tell me that mindfulness was the key, especially if they um, took the test before, um, got the content someplace else, but didn't add the test anxiety management for those folks who you know, took the test with another company, came and studied with me. Um, they will just tell me it's strategy and test management anxiety is what I didn't get in the other program. And that is, you know, key to them. And do not underestimate this. I have another video somewhere here on YouTube about my, what I call my Freddy Krueger experience when I went to go take the um, AMFTRB exam in 2021. And you just, you know, so even though I typically, I did not expect to have any test anxiety, but boy, things always happen. Um, and if I, I could probably share it in a different video, but the stories I've heard, weird things can happen to you on exam day. Do not underestimate test anxiety. Have a strategy, whether it's mindfulness or EFT tapping, or um, I've had people, a few people use hypnosis. I don't care what you do, but have a strategy for during that exam to keep your mind calm so that you can recall everything that you studied. So that is why test anxiety is so important. If you get anxious for any reason, I mean, computers crash, you can have the person next to you can have a full on panic attack and be screaming for five minutes. Yes, it's happened. Um, lots of where you can get stuck in a weird cargo elevator like I did and get a little freaked out before you, you just don't know. So many things can happen on test day and having that anxiety management strategy is really crucial to being able to recall what you study. Okay, so let's get on to playing red light, yellow light, green light to pass your licensing exam. And I, you know, this 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 strategy kind of evolved over the years. I was talking every month. I, I spend, a, you know, an hour or two talking with folks through their license exam questions. We practice together in a group like you and I are going to do in just a minute here. And I started like ranking them in these three piles. And I, it is these three piles if you... <laughs> If you're in my class, you watch me like do these piles. I kept having these piles I was putting the answers into. And I realized, oh my goodness, we could just play red light, green light and make this fun. So this is what we did. And we've had a lot of fun with it and helps reduce anxiety for some people. And I think it just helps you think really clear, more clearly. Because the basic idea is pretty simple. If you see an answer, one of the four answers is 100% wrong, you can give it a red light. And that is an awesome feeling. You're like, there's no way in the world this is incorrect. And then if it's, uh, you know, an answer that you think has potential to be correct, then you can give it a green, or if it's really mm, meh, you're not quite, it's not really clearly wrong, but there's just something you don't like about it, or there's something that's really kind of questionable in there, you give it a yellow light. And, um, and so the, when you're reading through your four options, do not look for the correct answer. Go through and rank order each one red yellow or green first. Don't think that you're looking for the right answer because sometimes you're going to end up with three greens. That's actually pretty rare. Sometimes you're going to end up with, you know, two yellows and two reds. And, you know, you're like, I don't like anything here, right? And oftentimes there's a mix, but go through, give each one a color before you get too excited about one answer or another. It slows you down just, uh, you know, a little bit. And not so much in terms of time, but just in terms of just taking that extra second or two to think through which, you know, which one is which, because sometimes you fall in love with an answer and then you kind of just you know, ignore the rest of them and that can get you to the wrong answer. Um, so you're really looking for answers that are potential candidates for the correct answer. And if you're lucky, you're gonna find some that you can clearly um, cross off. And, um, you know, as a red answer, you're sure it's incorrect. And so, and then once you've given each one of a color, it, it's interesting always to give it a gestalt because sometimes you're going to have, you know, more reds and sometimes you're going to have more greens or sometimes it's all yellows. Um, and so sometimes having that big picture, because I, I remember the first time I was using red light, green light, and I found one that was like two yellows and two reds. I'm like, wow, okay, I need to go back and rethink. <laughs> how I'm approaching this question because I didn't find an answer that looked right or correct to me. And I found that very, very helpful. Or if you end up with three greens and a yellow or four greens, right? You're like, okay, I need to be a little more critical and looking at the details. So I found having the different colors also helped me, um, you know, figure out which strategy within the strategy to be using 
Um, and, and, and also flagging when I need to go back and be a little bit more critical or less critical if you end up with a lot of reds and yellows in terms of looking at my answers, because one of them has to get a green light. That's the one thing we know for sure. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and practice together. So I'm going to go ahead and give you about 30 seconds to kind of quickly read through the question. And, and then I'm going to coach you through kind of how to uh, answer it. Okay, so um, yeah, I have a whole tap technique, TAP, and the first thing I always have folks do is to look at um, the stem to get the type of question. So we're going to start with the stem, which is, which of the following actions should the therapist take to manage the ethical issues involved in the case? So this is clearly an ethical question. And so hopefully you've got time to skim through that uh, vignette, but let's go through and walk through the questions and give them colors. And the truth is my colors and your colors may or may not line up, and that is okay. As long as you know what your colors mean, I know what my colors mean, and we both arrived at the correct answers, it's all good. This isn't about even getting the colors right. It's using the colors to help you find the correct answer. So the first um, option A is to provide continued treatment to the client and discuss the case with a colleague to monitor own feelings. Um, okay, so when you're looking at a possible answer, you, you always see the whole, all aspects of it. And this is a two-part answer. So the first part is providing continued treatment. And yes, I like that because we want to avoid abandoning or referring out a client unless absolutely necessary and then discuss the case with a colleague to monitor one's own feelings. So that's good, that's getting consultation. So that gets, both halves of that get a green light. So that's a green answer for me. Um, B, utilize limited self-disclosure and reassure the client of the therapist's understanding to enhance therapeutic empathy. Okay, um, hmm. oh God, self-disclosure, that is just such a, so, so utilizing limited self-disclosure. So that's not bad because if you are gonna self-disclose, it should be limited. Um, but, you know, I don't use a lot of self-disclosure to create empathy. That's normally not how I, I use it. And with the, or the ther therapist is already getting consultation. So self-disclosure is pretty risky in my mind. If you you're feels like your emotions are so raw, you have to already be consulting. So, so I, and, but you know, but then I think there are a lot of ex experiential therapists who would advocate self disclosure. So there's that piece. So, um, so I don't, yeah. So I'm not loving that, but it's not wrong. Uh, it's not clearly like a red answer to me. The second half is reassuring the client of the therapist's understanding to enhance. Therapeutic empathy. So uh, empathy is always good. Always like empathy. Um, but this is clearly in my book, it's yellow. It may be a different color for you, but it is a yellow in my book because I know that there's some therapists who would advocate for this. I just don't think it's the standard. Um, so I'm, got, I'm giving B a yellow. C, explain the potential for bias on the purpose and refer the client to an alternate therapist to provide ongoing treatment. So basically in this one, the therapist is referring the client out. And that seems like, I mean, the only time I would do that would be when there's, I, I'm clearly crossing boundaries because we don't want to refer our clients out. It costs them money. It's mildly or severely traumatic. Maybe not severely, it's, but it is a bit traumatic. It's the loss for the client. So whenever possible, we don't want to refer out unless there's clearly going to be harm done or clear, uh, there's a high likelihood of harm being done because we want to try to work, do the work on our side to fix things so that the client doesn't have to be referred out because that, 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 that does harm. That does a little bit of harm to the client and sometimes a little bit of harm is necessary. It's rather to have them lose some money and have to restart over and have that than be with poor boundaries or something. So, and when I, so for this, see, I have to go back and skim again. Did I miss anything that's, a, that's like, yeah, this, they have to refer out. So he sees his uh, spouse as aggressive and unreasonable, and he's already doing consulting. The client uh, is coming in for depression and describes a similar relationship. 
So I don't think in my mind that um, this reaches the threshold of ruling, uh, referring them out. And I'm still gonna give it like a yellow line. I almost wanna give it a red light, but I'm gonna read D because I don't wanna rule out anything until I'm 100% sure it's wrong because C is, is correct in certain circumstances. So, um, but it is a, it's almost orange if you wanna get complex here. And then let's look at D. Contain the therapist's own feelings and focus discussions on the client's depression to maintain consistency with the established treatment goals. So I like the first half, which is contain their own feelings. I, that feels like my stress goes down just reading about that compared to limited self-disclosure. I'm like, huh, yeah, that feels better. Um, so I like that. And I like the focused discussion on the client's depression to maintain consistency with goals. Always good. Maintaining consistency with treatment goals, usually always a green light, or at least that half of the question. So for D, both halves get a green kind of for me. And so, yeah, I like it. So we so now we are down to um, A and D, um, and so we have to make a choice. Okay, it's actually it's the third part of my uh, um, uh, strategy. So you need to be very uh, to go back then, and I, I use a P for being practical. So let's go back and read the stem and see if that helps us because we got two that we like. Um, and let's see if there are any clues in the STEM that helped us find the more correct answer. So which of the following actions, that's interesting when I reread it, I think of actions, should the therapist take to manage the ethical issues in the case? So this is about what action does a therapist take to manage ethical issues? And so if I look at A, are there actions that manage ethical issues? Provide continued treatment to the client? And just, so that's, an, that's good. And because we're not abandoning and we're discussing the case with a colleague. So that's consultation. So A still fits the bill with there. And if we look at D, we have contain the therapist's own feelings. So that's sort of like, I would say, boundary management in terms of uh, ethical things. And then focus on discussion on uh, the client's treatment goals. So it's more like boundary issues. So when I look at A versus D and I look at the STEM again, what actions manage ethical issues, I feel like A is a little bit stronger than D. Okay, so let's see what the answer is. And yes, it is A. So, and so you can see here, even when you end up with two greens, you have to go back, closely read that stem to figure out how to, um, which one's a little more green, which one's a brighter green. Let's use that metaphor, I like that. Clearly I like metaphors. Which one is the brightest green? Okay, we already see this is great. I've already learned something. Every time I do this, we end up with something uh, fresh and new. So that last question was from the California sample exams that the, their um, BBS gives out. And this is from the NFT or B uh, sample question for the national exam. Obviously, you could find either question on either exam. So, um, so for this one, um, I'll go ahead and let you skim the vignette and then I will coach you through it again. Okay, so I always start with the stem, which is the therapist decides to focus initially on the times when the father has thought the children were respecting their mother's authority. The purpose of this focus is to help which of these four things. Okay, so hopefully at a time to skim this. So the first possibility is to help the parents unite the marital dyad. Uni uniting marital dyads is always a good thing. Um, and so, so this is good. Um, and so if I look at the prompt there, at, the therapist is asking the father to identify when he thought the therapist children were respecting their mother's authority. So it's funny, it's in its the marital diet, not the um, parental diet. And so is that helping the marriage? I guess in some ways it is actually. So, but boy, when I read that, the first thing that really came to my mind is like a solution focus looking for exceptions. And I, I do think like structural and maybe even strategic, they might use some of this, this particular type of intervention because they don't tell us what theory is being used, which is annoying. 
Um, so yeah, I guess I'm gonna give that. And I guess I can get it's between green and yellow for me. And it's a lime green. Um, but I don't know. Let's go ahead and give it it's greenish, so I will uh, give it a green. Let's see. Two is to help the father accept his role as a step parent. <sighs> um, I don't see how this intervention clearly does that, but it could because you were asking the father to notice when the kids are listening to their mother. But that's kind of weird that that would. So that's really meant to me. I'm giving to a yellow because I don't see how having him identify. I mean, I guess it could, but it's like there's a piece missing to me. I don't know. I'm giving it yellow. You can give it whatever color you want. So then three uh, is to help the parents feel hopeful about the situation. So yeah, because this to me reads like a solution focus. That's just how this question strikes me. It could be wrong. You should never read anything to a question that's not there. But I like this one because I do feel like, oh, it does feel like, okay, yeah, the, uh, the, there are times the kids do listen to their mother's authority. They're focusing on that. That makes someone feel hopeful. So three is a green light to me. And the mother perceives her, to help the mother perceive her part in the interaction. That is always a good thing to help. That's a very systemic answer. Um, Although therapists decide to focus on the father has thought that children were respecting their mother's authority. Ugh. God, I got another lime green one on this one because I like this because it's very systemic and both licensing exams like systemic answers. Um, but what's what the piece that's missing for me is the mother perceived for part in the interaction. I'm not sure if that comes out of because the father uh, is identifying when the kids have listened to their mother. And I guess what's implied there is and what the mother was doing differently at that time that would get you to help the mother perceive her part in the positive interaction. So it's a lime green to me. Um, so I ended up with one truly yellow, two lime greens. And, you know, you don't have to use lime green or orange if you want to, but sometimes I do. And one solid green. So, um, which was helping the parents feel hopeful about the situation. So let's go back and because I have a lot of green shades in my answers, let's just read one more time. The therapist decides, it's interesting, the therapist decides, so this is a choice, this is the intervention to focus initially to start on the times when the father has thought that the children were respecting their mother's authority. The purpose of this is, if we look at three, I'm gonna go with three because it feels like, um, that it, 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 I think that's the best description of what just happened there. It sounds like the therapist is doing is act, asking for exceptions, which is designed to um, help parents feel hopeful. And yes, it is answer three. So I, I hope this was a fun and useful um, strategy. I think anyone, no matter how you're studying for uh, these exams, and in fact, I think even if you're studying for other exams, hopefully a uh, red light, yellow light, green light, um, and you saw that I threw in some lime and orange lights, um, that may or may not be helpful to you. It just depends on how your mind works, which I talk about also in my course, and I'm certainly the one who sees lots of possibilities. Um, but hopefully it's a fun way to help you kind of approach answering these questions in a slightly different way than you would a traditional exam, because you're not hunting first for the right answer. You're kind of rating them and then figuring out what your you know, the span of your options are. And from that, it usually it becomes much easier to identify which one was the correct answer. So I hope you enjoyed this tip. Um, you are always welcome to join if you are interested, if you like getting coached like this, that we do a lot of that. We do it live every month. Um, plus there is a lot of all the recordings of me coaching folks to the questions, talking them through like this. Um, so, uh, but either way, I hope you uh, enjoy playing red light, green light, and I hope it gets you to pass um, when you take your exam. Best of luck out there and make sure you have fun um, preparing uh, for this exam. Take care and be well.